This video is sponsored by Bityad, with over 400 cryptos to trade on their spot, perpetual coin futures, USDT futures, with leverage of 1x to up to 125x, you can trade foreign exchange, commodities like gold, silver and oil, and traditional markets like Nasdaq, all with some of the lowest fees available on any trading platform. You can use their copy trader to copy other traders with better performance than you, or you can become a copy trader yourself and earn a few extra percent from the people that follow you. Plus, it got 9 out of 10 stars from the Coin Bureau guy. Bityard. Hello everybody, welcome back. Not going to give you a little picture of me in the corner of the screen today, looking and yeah, pretty rough. So I'm going to run through this quick before I do the school the school run. This is just an update on the everything bounce that I was predicting last week. So last Thursday I was talking about the everything bounce and started to buy into things on Friday, um, uh, between uh, Thursday and Friday. This is for traditional markets, which in turn should have a knock-on effect for crypto just through association. So this is your Dixie. Dixie still can't get back above 105. If it were to get above 105, it's bullish and will go for continuation. Being below there should have con um, uh, consolidation maybe all the way down to 99 or 100 if we look at the chart we see bearish divergence the entire time all the way up I should add so you can't really fight the Fed but if we look at the chart the chart does suggest further down but you have to take that bit with a pinch of salt a more accurate um, uh, prediction of mine was oil spotting the oil top last week so oil top was about 120 and since then from the top to the bottom was 15% we're currently still almost 13% down this is all about trying to front run inflation data oil being fuel fuel being higher cost at the pump meaning less money for consumer meaning inflation so we wanted to see this come down and it's nice to see that we're already down because when I made this video people were going oil's going up you idiot don't you know what's going on in Eastern Europe all right yeah of course I do but it doesn't mean that these charts aren't overheated overpriced and looking to come down so uh, same with wheat 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 is down again from what I, 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 I understand a, a good 13 uh, percent uh, yep a continue a continuation of that so this is just the daily here um, but yeah continuation of the move down my expectation is that over time it's going to reach these pre um, pre main levels uh, so give or take about 760 Again, okay, it's all looking pretty good. We've got short signal on here as well. We recognised that a few days back last week, and that is likely to seeing what we're seeing now, the playing out as we speak. Interestingly enough, oil actually got the short signal a couple of days ago. It's not very clear, but it definitely is there. Uh, whether you take it seriously or not, it's a short signal, and this would be for another big drop down, probably down into the 90s, I would imagine. So I know what it sounds like, but that's what it would suggest. Uh, oil back down into the 90s, the low 90s. Dow Jones Industrial Average, one of the indexes that I bought into on uh, Friday. And since that uh, that week, uh, we are up 4%. Now, I did say that I was looking for this to maybe come down a little bit more with a risk to reward of about 3 to 5% uh, before it actually shoots up to the tune of maybe 15 to 30%. I know how it sounds. It's it's a, it's a crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. Um, but it's more likely to, uh, to shoot up. I don't think this one's going to shoot up by 30%. I think that's something we could maybe see on um on Nasdaq maybe but not so much for this one I, I think it was going to be crazy there so I think I think we're looking for 330 uh, sorry 3300 on this one for the everything bounce kind of position uh, and for Nasdaq uh, this is Nasdaq's pre-market so we can see they're already up a little bit uh, and again you know I'm not looking for the everything reversal I'm just calling for the everything bounce Sorry, I'm trying to rush this out because I know I've got to get in the car in a minute take those kids to school. So, so far we're actually up 7%, so that's quite good. Some of the stocks that I bought, and again, for just for, for uh, transparency, if that's what you want to call it, I just bought the top four of the NASDAQ. So we're talking um, Apple, Amazon, um, Microsoft, and, and Tesla. And uh, Tesla's done pretty pretty decent. But if you look through the NASDAQ, you will find some of these other ones uh, you know, that, that have gone to Wrecked City, bouncing even more. I just didn't, well, I didn't want to expose myself to unnecessary risk i was pretty confident that the everything bounce is going to play and it looks as though it is actually playing out uh, but i didn't want to expose myself to any more risk because obviously when i was talking about the everything bounce everyone was going you're wrong you're wrong it's going down Blah. and so yeah if i am going to expose myself unnecessarily to risk <laughs> which in my opinion you know was actually quite good risk to reward I didn't want to be going into all the shit coins from the Nasdaq. I call them shit coins because effectively that's how they behave. Look at Snapchat. Look at Facebook. Look at PayPal. Look at 
uh, Netflix, there's there's many to choose from. They're all behaving like shit coins. So yeah, the Nasdaq's probably the one that will uh, will bounce the most. And so yeah, I think we're talking about 27, 25, 27 from the from my entry point to the highs. Obviously, individual stocks will outperform that as well. So the everything bounce continuing to show momentum earlier than expected. I was going to give it a, a, a up to a three week period to to gain momentum, but it started to happen almost immediately after I made that video. And the S and P 500. Finding its first major area, uh, which is going to be this candle body uh, here, so this this gappy vibe here. Now, this is going to be the case for all of these indexes. Um, we want to see them build and and uh, close these bullish engulfing candles on these weekly charts here. So we've got it on the Nasdaq, S and P not quite got it, and um, neither has the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Doesn't mean that they can't get it, but uh, that's what we want to close like. So we are looking for and hoping for a bullish day today, but it doesn't really matter because, like I said, uh, we're getting short signals on these commodities, which should feed into inflation data. We all know that the rate hike took place, 75 basis points. It'll work. It'll account for something and so I expect the next CPI inflation data to actually show that it's come down this is all I was trying to do this is all I was trying to do uh, and uh, position myself early earlier than everybody else who's sitting around waiting for the CPI data to come through I thought I'll try and work out what I think is going to come through and the main two things are going to be oil wheat to an extent as well and we all know about the rate hike so it looks like the, um, the uh, everything that I wanted to happen is beginning to happening beginning to happen and happening at a faster rate than I expected which makes me feel even more confident about the everything bounce there's no point in looking or talking about Bitcoin we all know what's going on with that <clears throat> but it's going to move for association with the markets and um, it doesn't look particularly weak I have to say it doesn't look particularly strong either but certain altcoins are actually looking pretty interesting if you want to know more about all this I'm doing a live stream tonight for patreon members so there's a link in the description below join the telegram it's free join the patreon if you want to take part in the live streams other than that I hope you have a nice day and take it easy.